Welcome back to another session here at FinTech Nexus. I'm your host today, Todd Anderson, Chief Content Officer at FinTech Nexus. Before we go into uh, our session here today, just a couple of quick announcements for our audience. Um, today's session title, How to Reduce Fraud, Transaction Fraud While Increasing Approval Rates with AI and ML. Um, I wanna give a special thanks to the team at uh, Briterian MasterCard. Um, you know, they've been longtime supporters of our products. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the team over there, Amin, Carlos, Kurt, everyone's been a great partner for a very long time. So special thanks to, to Briterian MasterCard for their continued support. Um, I also wanna thank our speakers. I've mentioned Amin and Carlos by name, but also Andres. You know, our speakers take time out. Um, they prep for a lot of these sessions. So I want to give a special thanks to them as well to the audience. Uh, we obviously can't do any sessions unless there's people watching or viewing. So if you're watching the live session today, or if you're going to end up watching a recording, we thank you for your time uh, and attention. Um, and now on to our introductions um, you know, for our session today, uh, we have three really top line speakers. Amin Dalla, he's the Chief Product Officer, Criterion MasterCard. Amin leads product strategy and management for a suite of Briterian's AI products, such as market ready models for issuer and acquirer fraud, omni channel fraud, account to account fraud, and anti money laundering. Amin launched and manages MasterCard's market ready AI models and has over 15 years of experience leading product teams globally across fintech and e commerce. Carlos Zuluaga. Carlos is MasterCard's LAC Regional Head of Cyber and Intelligence Solutions for Artificial Intelligence. He is based in Miami. Carlos has more than 35 years of experience in the payments industry, extensive technical experience in special projects, including e-commerce, smart cards, fraud loss, fraud tools since the inception of those technologies, and passionate about the impact of AI on the payments industry. And Andres Waddle. Andres has over 17 years of fraud prevention experience in fintech, e-commerce, and tourism industries. He has helped create successful fraud prevention teams and strategies for some of the largest companies in Latin America. Uh, and now I'm going to turn it over to Carlos and our esteemed group today as they're going to go through, just to give the audience a little prep, they're going to go through a slide presentation. And then, as always, we always encourage the audience, submit your questions, whether it's five minutes in, 10 minutes in, 15, 20, whatever the time might be. We suggest you use the Q&A box. Just click the Q&A box in your Zoom window, type the question in, and we'll go ahead and try to get to as many questions as we move throughout the conversation. Carlos, I'm going to pass to you. Take it away and to our esteemed group. Thanks, Todd. Um, well, um, as uh, Todd mentioned, uh, I've been in the industry payment for a long time. Uh, and I can tell you uh, that uh, financial institutions face multiple pain points and complexities while managing fraud. So what are those uh, pain points and complexities. Uh, basically, uh, the first one is, you know, fraud has changed. Probably you that have been with me a lot of time also in the industry, remember uh, that the, the counterfeit was the major problem that we have in the payment industry. No, the fraud uh, with counterfeit. So basically, um, that was uh, solved with technology. Uh, with the EMB chip, because technology always was there. So, but but the problem is, the industry changed. The digital came, so all the interactions, more most of the interactions now are digital. So the fraud as well. So we change the the, the fraud changed totally in the in this new environment. Uh, protecting brand perception. Uh, you know, brands continues ruling out um, the, the stakeholders just to reinforce uh, 
the brand protection and reputation. So always uh, asking all the stakeholders just to, to do a better job on monitoring fraud. The next one is rapidly emerging, emerging regulations. So basically regulations are, regulators are doing the same, no? It's just putting a lot of pressure on all the stakeholders in the industry just to uh, guarantee uh, the security of the end consumer, no? Uh, so, so, so a lot of rules, a lot of uh, regulations uh, from the regulations uh, regulator side. The other point is how to balance uh, the, the user experience versus security. So at the end is, we, we understand that security is very important, but it's much more the user experience or, or, or probably the same level. So it's exactly that point. How can we uh, be more flexible uh, with the security when to not affect the user experience? But you can do it only if you have the right technology to do that, no? And finally, reducing operational costs because now when the world is totally digital, the, the number of transactions increase on the network. Now we have much more uh, disputes from the end consumer saying, I didn't do this transaction. So what is the real way to do that? And for acquired and for the for the entire ecosystem is costing a lot. The chargebacks cost a lot to actually for acquired. So really, uh, I think the most affected part on all of this equation now are acquired. So the question is, what is the new technology that should be uh, in place to guarantee all the stakeholders that we are going to reduce fraud, not increasing or, 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 or damaging the user experience. Well, so let me, let me turn to, to um, ask directly uh, to Amin. Uh, Amin, can you, can you please uh, elaborate a little bit more in what is this all about of transaction fraud monitoring and what are those pain points that you are also seeing globally? And thanks a lot for that uh, background and uh, a lot of the aspects which you spoke about resonate with uh, acquirers and payment service providers globally. Now, if you think about the core function or the business premise for an acquirer or for a PSP, uh, it's all about how do you actually, you know, process transactions and, you know, for your, for your merchants, you know, you want to grow revenue for them. Uh, you want to actually increase the uh, uh, the customer value, the customer profitability. So that it's it's all about that. That's the core premise, and uh, so it goes back to some core metrics in terms of you know how do you actually grow revenue, how do you increase approval rates. That's very crucial. Uh, how do you uh, and and as part of that process, how do you actually then mitigate fraud? Uh, you know within the uh, whole uh, landscape. Uh, and if you think about it, so this is like kind of the business context of the business imperative. And now let's layer back into what is the uh, uh, the scenario which you're looking at in the ecosystem. And as Zulu, you indicated, you know, processes increasingly become sophisticated. Uh, they have access to a range of tools, improving range of tools. Uh, they have access to improved lines of communication as well, global lines of communication as well. So, uh, so they are actually making have uh, you know have a uh, utility of the advancements in technologies just like you know uh, the fraud management teams at at, at acquirers have as well so um so yeah so that's the ecosystem within which they're operating and if you think about uh, what we're seeing across with acquirers and payment service providers globally is uh, uh, they are basically uh, you know making use of you know ml models in some case in some cases they're making use of analytical models legacy rules in some other instances, it's a combination of that. Um, and uh, effectively, what, uh, especially for those who make use of analytical models, or let's say, you know, uh, or legacy rules, these are often like static and you're not kind of catching the latest trends of, well, you know, techniques which fraudsters are, you know, quickly, you know, adapting to. So, so that's why we actually, at, um, uh, at, at Brighton Mastercard, Mastercard, we come out with a transaction fraud monitoring solution. 
uh, which is a machine learning solution. We, we deploy this model uh, in the cloud or on-premise for, for our customers, for acquirers of PSPs. Uh, and what we've seen is that uh, with uh, a review of less than 1% of the transactions, just a review of that, you know, maybe just uh, you know, have those transactions stepped up, et cetera, but we can detect an incremental up to, you know, 30% in, uh, in, in fraud detection. So, um, and this is 30 percent over and above, uh, you know, what the existing, you know, fraud systems actually detect. So it's, it's clearly, you know, um, an incremental value add. And plus, you know, acquirers can also submit more uh, transactions uh, for authorization as well, which is which is crucial and just uh, critical to their to their business. So uh, it's definitely going back to the core premise of addressing here: how do we actually increase our transaction approvals? How do we increase? Uh, you know, revenue in, in that particular uh, context while mitigating fraud and improving the customer experience. Totally agree. Thank you. Um, Andres, let, let me ask you, uh, what about in Argentina? Is, uh, is something that you are seeing something similar uh, regarding the, the role of the acquirers and how you see this transaction fraud monitoring? Not the tool, but the, in general, no, the, 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 the the situation that you have to, to solve what the monitoring the fraud. Yeah, let me tell you something uh, a step before. Argentina was not a country that was experiencing uh, fraud problems. So two years ago, uh, we had to, to work really hard to, to get to the, uh, to the situation we have now, where we have a lot of, of tools connected from the issuer side but especially from the acquired side that was not a problem before um companies were overall not prepared to to do this and the main problem was we had to connect a tool to a payment flow that's already closed so what were we going to do? we needed a real-time solution we needed a pre-out solution and of course we needed a cloud-based solution uh so well that's where Riterion get uh, to to us uh, where we connected that tool and um, basically the rest is history i mean uh we had a finally end-to-end -end control of the transactions excellent so you mentioned Riterion. let's uh let's uh i mean just to talk uh to us uh, a little bit more about the the, the Brightidion solution and the, and the key differentiators of the platform. Uh, yes, I think, uh, you know, uh, so MasterCard has been leveraging, you know, AI for, for over a decade right now. We enable, uh, you know, our issuing partners with uh, machine learning services from a transaction fraud perspective, where we provide a, a transaction fraud score for every a transaction as part of the auth to the bank, which has issued the card. Uh, the bank can then take that uh, score into consideration while a decision on a transaction. Uh, so if you think about this, uh, this could happen while I'm actually, you know, uh, having coffee out here or, you know, Andres is making a transaction in, uh, in Buenos Aires and, uh, uh, you know, online. So all of these transactions uh, are coming, you know, uh, to MasterCard Central System and we, we decision on these transactions. We, we, we basically review them from a a transaction fraud perspective and send it to the issuing bank so that they can decision on it. Um, and then you we, we send the score back to the acquirer. So that's what we've been doing from an issuing perspective. Um, and we do this for over 100 billion transactions. It's got to be real time because uh, all of us, you know, make those transactions. We tap and pay, we click and pay, you know, we experience, expect all that to be real time. Uh, and uh, it's also got to work alongside all the interoperably alongside the other features of an ecosystem, like, you know, Andres, you know, some of your merchants may actually have royalty points, you know, or, uh, you know, some of our issuing banks may actually have installment products. So all of this got to go like flow very seamlessly uh, in, the, in our, our transaction. And so this is what we actually bring into the acquiring side of the house and which even I'm in um, Naranja and is, is using Andres team is using out there, uh, which are basically market ready models uh, in the transaction fraud models, which can be used uh, to uh, to detect fraud. Um, and I think some of the uh, core aspects, which uh, 
you know, any any fraud management team, uh, you know, looks at is, uh, you know, and some of the differentiators which helped uh, deliver on those is, uh, you know, our smart agent AI technology, which helps us deliver, you know, accurate results, because that's super crucial. If your models are not accurate, uh, you're not going to be, you know, you're, you're going to be cool, you're not going to be used by, by, by acquirers or payment service providers, as, as simple as that. Uh, we're also able to develop these models, uh, you know, in a very short span of time because you have a very uh, uh, a full state, uh, you know, a toolkit. So that's something we can also customize models. But better still, um, uh, just like Andres was indicating, we're actually able to provide market-ready models, which you know acquirers can actually use to get you know ROI right from day one. So they don't have to wait and learn from fraud friends, etc. They get the fraud friends which we learn from the network. So that's the benefit of that. Uh, we're able to do this because we're also able to uh, be able to understand the trends we have as MasterCard because we're working through a transaction activity and we've enhanced the models based on learnings from that. And you know, I think the other important aspect uh, is that you know, these models have got to perform real time because you know you're a you're a customer, you're clicking buy, and you're expecting you know the transaction to go through you know uh, you know as soon as possible. So it's got to uh, deploy real time with the highest possible service level. So that's pretty crucial. Um, and, uh, and lastly, you know, it's got to operate within the uh, within the aspects of data governance, which is there in a given country, uh, you know, as applicable. So all those areas, uh, you know, are there. And uh, the way actually we go about building these uh, models, uh, I'll, I'll kind of give you a view into how it is actually built, because that's that's how it, all these things are bring, brought to life. So first of all, we start off with all the data which is available to MasterCard as a network. So uh, if you can go on to the uh, next slide, Sulu. Um, so we start off with uh, all the data which is available to MasterCard as a, as a network. So this includes all the transaction activity, let's say we're seeing in Latin America, uh, for example, and we're also looking at all the, the, the fraud data which have been reported by, uh, by banks as well. So all this data is available for us globally, all the transaction activity as well as all the fraud activity. Uh, so we are learning from that, uh, from those uh, data sets. We are actually deriving our intelligence. So we have a Brighton AI technology applied on top of that. Uh, and because of our history of, you know, building out, you know, deriving intelligence, we're able to, you know, really create a lot of uh, enhanced intelligence, which are able to create a lot of value in the form of these fraud scores. So we have these transaction fraud monitoring scores, which are made available. So any transaction, the output, simply put, is a fraud score indicating the likelihood that a transaction is fraudulent or not and a corresponding reason course so then uh you know uh partners like andres could then take the score and then they could actually at, at decide if they're going to submit you know more transactions for, for authorization uh and a, a small portion of transactions and then basically then uh you know possibly held back for 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 uh you know additional authentication uh, and the like but hopefully this gives a view as to how we're really able to leverage the the network intelligence that you have as mastercard and right here on to provide those really uh highly accurate models which operate at uh, scale sure it's a it's a very good high level overview of the solution but uh, maybe you want uh, uh, to tell us uh, in more detail uh, how really this uh, criteria solution works. Yes, yeah, so in terms of how our uh, solution actually works, we, we have end-to-end -end modular uh, toolkit, uh, which uh, our fraud management teams at acquiring banks can make use of. Uh, and they can choose from any one of these modules. There are five modules out there in terms of uh, the model score, the market ready models. Uh, we have rules engine. We can deploy the models in the cloud on premise. It's a case management module and even does business insights. So, first of all, in terms of the uh, modeling toolkit, uh, this is where we have a market ready models, which I've spoken about. Uh, so, these are the ones which are able to really create an ROI right from, ROI from day one. So, uh, effectively, uh, once that is taken, we can actually deploy these models in the cloud or on-premise. So we're able to host these models in the cloud across data centers uh, globally. Uh, and uh, that really, uh, but we give the choice uh, to our acquiring partners, uh, uh, such as Naranja, where then basically you can choose between on-prem or cloud, which one you want to go with. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, customers can choose to uh, 
go with cloud or if they want to basically you know, buy the infrastructure and they can actually buy the infrastructure or use its ex existing infrastructure to go for an on-prem deployment. Uh, we then have make available a rules module, uh, which is highly modular in, uh, in nature, uh, which, uh, which our, our partners use in combination with schools, so depending upon their strategy. Uh, then we come on to the investigative case management module, which, uh, you know, where the uh, agents or the, uh, or the fraud specialists uh, at an organization uh, for an acquiring banks, they actually work those alerts. Uh, it's a module for them to actually effectively work those alerts. And then there's business insights in terms of, you know, leveraging business insights, uh, which fraud management, like fraud management team uh, would, uh, would actually use. Uh, so just uh, double click into uh, each of these. Uh, uh, we, uh, moving on to rules. Uh, so this is where we really provide uh, the fraud management team at acquirers or our payment service providers with a with a module which really helps them write rules uh, uh, to to meet their needs. So you can create custom rules. Uh, you can actually create rules in any given data element. Uh, as well as using a combination of you know any kind of counters etc so it's really very as flex flexible as it can get so once the rule writing has been taken care of um, which is obviously very flexible which i've spoken about you can actually then go ahead and test those models before deploying because you obviously want to simulate results so we have a simulation tool uh, which makes uh, which our uh, acquiring partners make use of and then you also have rule performance to see how these more rules are actually perform in production. So that way you actually can quickly review, hey, uh, what is the impact of any particular rule? Like are we generating a huge amount of false positives? Are we basically triggering a huge amount of declines, et cetera? So, so it really provides that suite to really enhance your rule, rule management capabilities. This is complemented by a case management module. So in a case management module, now based on alerts which are being generated, uh, based on the uh, the scores which we have from our AI model, as well as from the, the rules engine, we provide the case management module. But then, as you can think about it, you know you can obviously have the, the ability to define users, groups, you know, you know features and capabilities associated with your with supervisors, with actual agents, etc. So there's that aspect in terms of users, groups, and roles. From a case management administration perspective, you can actually your fraud agents can actually go ahead and you know work these cases there's a lot of uh, you know core capabilities which have been added on to increase the ease of use for them because uh, that's something which has been key for us how can we make it easy for fraud management teams to make use of it? and obviously this this core re reporting capability and and auditing uh, which is required uh, you know in, in any any such uh, system Moving on from there, we move on to business insights. And on business insights, now it comes down to, you know, hey, we put these rules. Uh, we have the model operating at scale and performance. We have rules being put in place, which an organization may or may not put in. And then you have uh, you have case management capabilities. And then you have business insights, which are being enabled. And here we really provide a very modular platform where, you know, we enable, you know, our, our acquirers and payment service providers to actually really do self-serve analytics, you know, pick and choose, drag and drop. Each, each fraud management team has their own favorite views to look at, uh, by which they actually manage their, uh, their ecosystem uh, and their, the KPIs. So that, that flexibility has been made available. So uh, it's basically, I think the whole, all these different modules have been developed with the intent of, hey, how can you provide maximum flexibility with a minimum amount of implementation requirements on the part of acquiring partners and payment service providers. Perfect. That's uh, all what acquirers need just to solve the problem. But uh, let me ask Andres to you because you already have the experience uh, mm -hmm. with this solution in place. Uh, and uh, how how are you working with this uh, criteria solution and how is that helping to the pain points uh, that you have? Let me tell you that for us, it was quite easy to start working with Praetorium, basically because it's very similar to our issuer uh, tool that's also, also a MasterCard solution. Um, we have the same agents that work seeing the fraud from what one side, work also seeing the, the fraud from, from the other side. So we use today the rule management solution uh, module 
and uh, the case management module tool. And we are looking forward also to work with an onboarding module that I know they are they are working <laughs> in your side. Um, overall, it's really quite quite easy. Our agents works uh, daily on the on the case management, and they check all the the alerts which we set. And we have our data team that works with the the rule management uh, module. So we, they weekly make some changes in the rule, but basically to connect our strategy with the issuer side. So we have both both tools in the same in the same path, and we know that what whatever one does, the other one knows that it's happening, and we don't uh, crash the, the approval rate. So nowadays it's going quite smooth. Um, so we are really happy to to use them excellent so you would say that the the tool is helping you with the pain point that you have yes of course have. of course i mean there it was a, a pain point that we couldn't uh make it work uh if we didn't have the solution um we we were really used to see everything from the issuer side and it was really, really hard to see the, the other side. I mean, and nowadays in Argentina, and basically I think in, in all Latin America, the, the acquirer side, it's been the most uh, dangerous side from a transaction. Uh, everything is it's going from one side to the other because, I mean, the issuer side, it's, it's really strong nowadays, but the acquirer side, it's not. So uh, we we really needed a solution that makes us uh, control that pain point. Excellent. Uh, so, I mean, why why do you don't tell us uh, a little bit about, about the 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 case studies that you know very well uh, globally and in the region? Well, uh, well, it's, I, I think it's great that Andre has actually walked through, you know, how we've been working with uh, with with, uh, with his team at Rancho and you know, uh, going through the experience out there. Uh, just like that, we've also been working with other partners, you know, globally as well across with uh, other acquirers. Uh, um, you know, in in North America and in Latin America, as Andre was talking about, and uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So. Uh, uh, and one such example is with uh, was in another Latin American acquirer, wherein we were able to with a top top ten acquirer out there, wherein we were looking to mitigate transaction fraud, increase transaction approvals, increase throughput. Uh, in this particular case, we were able to drive about uh, up to uh, eight uh, up to ten percent incremental fraud detection um, and uh, eight percent at bit of it hardly any impacts on the. Uh, uh, on the uh, uh, on the approval rate. So in this case, again, we're able to kind of just provide like high return on um, uh, return investment with the you know right from uh, right from uh, right from day one. And again, in this particular case, it comes back to like are you able to score transactions real time? And as Andy was also alluding, because we also look at we're looking at fraud in its entirety, or you know, sitting where we are as Mastercard by Tiron. We had to have a really good feel of how, you know, what are the kinds of core uh, capabilities and intelligence we should be embedding into our models to actually drive, you know, uh, uh, transaction approvals and, and reducing uh, fraud. So that's more that which we're able to uh, depict out here as well. Um, uh, in terms of um, going beyond this, we have other examples as well, uh, where, where we have actually. Uh, uh, developed uh, models are working with partners globally. Uh, as you can see, there's a range of, uh, uh, you know, uh, well-known acquirers and leading acquirers, uh, uh, you know, globally, uh, which you're working with. Um, and uh, and these are, again, you know, these are instances of deployment uh, uh, as uh, as you would recognize, you know, uh, uh, marquee brand names or acquiring brand names. Uh, um, um, or payment service providers, or, or even payment gateways, uh, you know, across uh, uh, across the globe. I think one thing I just want to touch touch on is, you know, in our, as Andre, you were talking about, you know, the whole need to be to develop a system which your fraud management team is more familiar with. I think that's really that's really a crucial aspect because 
Um, because if you're not able to do that, then you know you, um, you you'll quickly kind of not be able to you know meet the needs of you know our our customers like partners like uh, Andres and and help them provide a good experience to their end merchants. You know, so uh, uh, and I think this is where I think we we've had over a, a decade of experience with some of our uh, some of our partners acquiring partners. So when you say a decade of experience, it's not just like we started you know building some of these interfaces like a a year or a couple of years back. We've been doing this for over uh, over ten years, and we've been doing as across each one of those modules I was talking about from. From a model build perspective, from a, from a rule management perspective, uh, case management perspective, and inside. So it's those are the those are the enhancements and the expertise which we which we bring to the table along with our working with value partners, just like uh, uh, just like Naranja uh, itself. Well, so so we can say that we have a proven uh, solution that uh, demonstrated value in all of these customers. Uh, so in terms of the, can you tell to, to our uh, acquirers of the team, how can they get started with this? How, how, what should be the next steps with them? Yes, yeah, so I think as we, uh, as we looked at the need and you know, speaking to partners like, uh, 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 like, uh, you know, the uh, requires across the globe. And the key aspect was how do we actually create value? It's a, it's a, it's a core pain point, as Andrew was alluding to in the whole like what inside of the house in terms of transactions and the liability which comes along like that for, uh, for current and present transactions. Uh, it is, uh, it's something which needs to be managed very effectively, but at the same point in time, you've got to like really drive the core metric for acquirers is. I mean, it's not it's not fraud. It's basically what is the amount of you know throughput. What is the uh, uh, what is the transaction approval rates? Those are the core metrics because merchants, based on that, they actually then you know themselves you know, evaluate acquirers themselves and payment service providers. So uh, that is the order of the day. So when we looked at it, we said, hey, how can we actually provide a true value added service with minimal implementation, minimal um uh you know uh you know requirements on the part of iQuadis kind of integrate and this is where we actually build the market models with network intelligence so you actually glean all of the intelligences you have as mastercard with the fraud which is being refreshed on a quarterly basis so uh, we have that being made available to our to our customers and as an acquirer you don't need to do much you don't need to basically you're basically getting all of this intelligence and it's being refreshed so that's the beauty of it uh, and it's and it's as big a uh, you know a, a consortium as as, uh, as as possible you know then moving on to uh, phase two is deployment again we provide you know uh, flexibility hey you do you want to deploy these models on prem or in the cloud and you know I think uh, in the case of Nurancha we uh, you decided to, to go to the the cloud route uh, uh, and uh, again so it's what was flexibility we offer and this and it's pretty much we base streamline the API it's a uh, it's a straightforward API, and uh, when you send across, uh, you know, core set of uh, data elements which you would actually see uh, from an acquiring or a PSP perspective, and you're able to get a, a score and a reason code. Uh, so it's it's pretty much as uh, as simplified as we could actually potentially, you know, make it. You have the option, obviously, to test in sandbox, etc., before you actually push it to prod. We're also working a lot of acquirers who. Uh, who are looking for first time acquirers as well. So they basically they straight up start using it. Others run it in shadow mode for some time, and then they kind of turn live or they use it alongside in conjunction with the existing models as well. So there's a lot of that also happening. So, so that's how we actually brought about this. So if you come down to and say, okay, so what is required? What is this actually boiled down to? So uh, moving on to the next slide, here we have is uh, it's roughly about here being. We, we look at you know pretty much making our API available, so you will actually uh, will we'll quickly confirm on you know what's the core objective, which is the use case you want to solve for. Uh, you use an API which is which is available, and then you start using uh, calling that API. You with your transaction data feeds, you get your scores back, and then pretty much it's it's up to the acquirer to decide as to hey when you want to go live. So, and depending upon your comfort levels, uh, you know we've had acquirers who actually you know really gone live and off the bat. Others basically uh, would like to check out for a couple of weeks in sandbox and then go live. So, but pretty much it's it's there, the value is being created right from day one, pretty much because of the inherent 
you know, the, uh, the data sets and the, and, the, and the AI technology which we have, which, which can help create value. And this whole process takes, uh, you know, it can take as, uh, you know, as little as four weeks to as much as like, you know, eight, uh, you know, eight, uh, eight to 10 weeks, so anyway, in that particular uh, time frame. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's a very short time. Uh, actually, um, in, in the creation of, uh, of AI models, I know that one of the most uh, uh, pain points uh, is, is just uh, getting the data from, from, from customer, no? Hey, do you have historic data? Provide me data uh, and pro data. But we are doing that uh, with our data with our network data no, at MasterCard and with, uh, and with the, all the fraud data that we have. So that's the market model. So I think that's one of the key benefits on, on this solution, no? just to have those uh, models ready, no? it's, uh, ready for each market because we know the transactionality. We know the fraud in each case. So the model is just learning at, at that specific market. Is that right? Hmm? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the key advantage. Uh, I think that, you know, uh, sourcing data for any organization, you know, irrespective of size or, or geography in any region, you, you name it, it's it's always a challenge. And it's, uh, it's uh, so here you're actually able to benefit from, you know, all the network data which we have as MasterCard, we actually build up these models. The other important aspect I want to indicate is that in our models, we, the, the, these solutions are brand agnostic and we score over um, over 50 billion transactions for acquirers direct to acquirers uh, or uh, you know and these cover you know uh, you know any uh, any any network any any payment method and uh, you know uh, so they are brand agnostic as well good okay so what should be the next steps here what with you uh, our audience here just uh, if you want to start with that uh, first uh, you have that email uh, at brightillion.com, which is the cell. Contact us, or if you know your uh, counterpart at MasterCard, just tell them that you are interested. Uh, think uh, what is the business, the, the use case that you are looking for. I imagine that what you want is just to uh, uh, reduce the fraud uh, in, at the transaction level, which is uh, what, what we what we have been talking all the uh, this session. Uh, and uh, see what data do you have uh, available? I mean, we already produced the, the models as, uh, as we explained, uh, market model. But really, if you have uh, more pro data or the other brand data, uh, that's useful as well for the model. Just uh, see what is the availability of that data and ask for a technical call uh, because we are just ready for you to, to to align uh, on the technical requirements. So it's all that you need to do. You heard uh, from, from uh, our expert, Amin, how easy is uh, an integration like this. And you also heard uh, from one of our customers, which already implemented the solution. Uh, how easy was the implementation? How fast uh, and quick was just to, to, to start using the model? And now they are uh, just uh, resolving all the pain points that they have in the market. So uh, I think with uh, with this cover, uh, this part, a thought back to you. All right. Well, thank you. And um, you know, I think that that there's a lot of good uh, detailed uh, information there for the audience to to grab on. And um, you know, I can tell that because we've gotten some really, really interesting questions uh, from our audience. So you know, I want to see. You know, we we have some time uh, to go to questions. Um, so we've got a a, a bunch here. Um, you know, first one I'm going to read off is, you know, how effective are your models for banks which are already using artificial intelligence? Yeah, that's a really important question, Todd, and. Um... Uh, you know, I think that uh, in terms of uh, our, our acquiring banks, uh, they, they use a combination of you know, machine learning models, some of them are using analytical models, so, you know, and or legacy roles, whatever combination may be. Uh, and uh, our models, uh, Brighton's machine learning models, uh, which acquirers, which acquire directly to acquirers, uh, can provide an incremental up to 30% fraud detection. So this is 30% over and above 
the fraud which they detect today. So it's increment up to 30 percent uh, by reviewing, uh, you know, less than one percent of, uh, you know, the Arba, uh, the top prioritized alerts. So and again, these alerts, which they would then maybe they'll just, you know, provide for additional authentication or whatever the strategy being aligned on with a with given merchant. So so and at the same point in time, it's also leading to increase in transaction approvals and uh, uh, and revenue. So we're able to do this in a couple of aspects, uh, which you've spoken about, like in you know, the hates on account of the uh, more accurate in modeling which we have, which by Tinon's AI models enable. Uh, and secondly, on account of the uh, uh, you know the fact that hey, you can actually build these models, but actually being able to deploy them and, and operate at real time scale because you know uh, you you can't have acquirers and PSPs like you know just not operate real time. That's that's super crucial for them. You know uh, they have the SLAs of, of milliseconds, which we have to kind of adhere to, and that's that's super done. Uh, you know, uh, uh, crucial. So um, so yeah, I think that's roughly what we've seen of incremental up to thirty percent with by reviewing uh, less than one percent of alerts, and obviously it can that percentage of fraud detection can can go up further as well. And as you move along the continue. We got another question here. Um, what's crucial for an AI solution provider? I'm gonna take this one. I think the, the first part is how much time do you need to have it on production? Uh, nowadays, when you are starting to, to work in a, in a new product, you basically need a plug and play solution. Uh, so, you don't uh, take a lot of time to, to have a tool connected. And after that, you need a, a model that works from the beginning. So I think also this is a, a time issue. So um, I think time is like the, the title of this. And in our case, for example, we started working with Rytidion for QR codes uh, payment payment link, and we didn't have any data. So basically, having a good solution that knows about the matter and about the 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 issue you are working on uh, makes like a whole. Yeah, I think that's really crucial, Andrews, mm -hmm. because you know, I think the payment methods and the what consumers the different kind of payment methods trends how they actually initiate transactions. The kind of payment methods used at the back and all those are very crucial aspects and it's a pretty dynamic dynamic space right now so yeah. let let me tell you also that you need a flexible tool from the other side this is very very important that you are not getting married with a with a, a stone that you can't change it so <laughs> in our case we continue i think every week sending new data points that we use for for our strategy um, that's really, really important. Another interesting question here, um, you know, as you work with, um, you know, financial institution clients that provide services, um, you know, to end customers, you know, what are some of the customer experience trade-offs that they might face? Yeah, I think, so, you know, the, the, there are trade-offs all along the, you know, the life cycle for, you know, for the customers and, you know, from an acquiring perspective, or from the merchants they bring on board for for the transactions as well, and uh, um, I think you know, first of all, starting off with this merchant onboarding itself, and how do you actually onboard merchants? What is the uh, trade off between your 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 fraud risk as well as the, the you know the volume of transactions you want to process, right? Um, in conjunction with your demand gen activities. Then once actually merchants come on board, it's all about how do you actually, there's that whole aspect of transaction monitoring, there's merchant monitoring. So how do you actually look at uh, uh, driving more transaction approvals? Uh, and again, it goes back to a customer for that particular transaction. You're not just transacting for that particular transaction, but it's about their relationship with that merchant. So you really want the approvals to happen, revenue to grow. And then that particular acquirer would also want would be looking at the same metrics because you're looking, hey, what's my approval rate with this particular acquirer? Or what's my, what's my, uh, you know, uh, you know, fraud rate as well. So you got to look at it from a broader perspective, and then uh, not just that particular transaction. And then uh, from a much monitoring perspective, as well, yeah, you want to like monitor your merchant risk as well. So 
All of those are all of those are aspects along the continuum, uh, along the life cycle stages. So, but machine learning really enables you make the right trade offs because and from a, and a, a Berkeley don't be able to do that because hey we have access to, you know the master network data which. And then secondly, there's the whole aspect where I'm able to leverage a variety of AI technology to, uh, to, to derive enhanced intelligence and then be able to deploy it real time as well and in a sustainable manner like Andre is indicating as well, so that you, you know, real time, you're actually kind of gleaning and, and learning all the time and, and creating value for, you know, for your, for your acquirers, for your merchants, for the whole acceptance ecosystem. Looks like we have time for about one more question here. Um, you know, do you see demand for Briterian acquirer solutions across all of Latin America, or is there any focus on on kind of one country versus another country? What what are you seeing today? I can take that one. Uh, definitely, there is a, a room uh, for all markets in LAC. Uh, actually. Uh, we have already uh, solutions in place in, in Brazil and Argentina with Naranja, but another customers as well. And we have other markets that are started. I think this, uh, the problem uh, is for all acquirers, no matter the market. So if the, if the, if the market model uh, that we are using applies for uh, the, the data for the, for the specific market, the fraud for the specific market really is, is going to work well. So I think this is a need, absolutely. I'm sure it's going to help all acquirers uh, across the market, the, the, the region. So totally. I think that that's a good place to end. Um, I want to thank uh, our speakers, uh, Carlos, Amin, and Andres. Uh, special thanks, as always, to our audience, those who either watched uh, live or uh, will watch the recording. Uh, so thank you for your time and attention and, and um, you know, a special thanks as always uh, to the Briterian MasterCard team, uh, longtime partners, longtime supporters, and, and we greatly appreciate the continued support. Um, again, thank you everyone for your time and your attention. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.